What's up, MSM? This is Jason with your five at nine for the day. Uh, this morning, I'm kind of on a high, kind of freaking out still a little bit because I was up last night watching the Gators win their very first College World Series. It was awesome. The finish was great. It was like a 2-1 baseball game all the way to the end until like the eighth inning and we smashed it in 6-1. to one. Oh, okay. All right. That's out of my system. I'm happy now. I'm going to move on. All right. So this past Sunday, we talked about is the Bible reliable? First, let me say it this way for you guys to think through this. Why are we questioning the Bible to have the burden of proof? Here's what burden of proof means. Burden of proof means you or whoever bears the burden has to prove whether they're legitimate or not. So, for instance, in the court, you are considered innocent until proven guilty. So that means the person, uh, the prosecutor, the person who is more or less attacking you, attacking your credit, credit um, it's their burden to prove you're not innocent. Otherwise, you're assumed as innocent until proven otherwise. So why are we putting the burden of proof on the Bible? Meaning the Bible has to prove whether it's legitimate or not. First off, I think the Bible does an excellent job about proving itself. But the issue remains, we come to the Bible with this cynicism and um, disbelief where we don't think it's true just because the stories maybe are a little outlandish or don't make sense to us or archaeologically we're like, I don't know if that's real or not. I mean, like, a lot of people struggle with the big flood. A lot of people struggle with Jonah and the big fish. A lot of people struggle with <clears throat> fire falling from heaven and taking out Sodom and Gomorrah. I understand those questions are a little different, but first you need to ask the question, do I believe in an all-powerful, all-present, all-knowing God? If the answer is yes, then all those things that you just described or all those questions that you have are easy. If God can create the whole universe, he can certainly create a big fish. See what I'm saying? So is the burden of proof on the Bible or not? The other thing... Um, when it comes to archaeological references and stuff like that, the Bible, even though sometimes we question the legitimacy of it, sometimes it takes time to prove the legitimacy of it. Again, I'm not talking about burden of proof, but here's what I mean. Pilate, Pontius Pilate, the guy who crucifies Jesus. For the longest time, there were a lot of archaeologists and historians who thought that they just made that guy up. Because if they used a real legitimate Roman prefect, then we'd be able to historically go back, find that legitimate name, uh, Roman prefect or, or governor, to prove whether Jesus existed or not. So they said, well, we don't have any evidence of Pontius Pilate, so we think he's not real. Well, just a few years ago, they found a stone tablet from that era with Pontius Pilate as prefect of Judea, with his name engraved in the stone. So he was kind of exonerated. Now everyone's like, okay, he was a legitimate person. We don't know much about him, but he was a legitimate person. See what I mean here where we intentionally look at the Bible with skepticism and we disbelieve it until someone proves it to us? What if we just, as Christians, accepted the Bible? Because there's legitimate reasons. We've talked about manuscripts. We've talked about... Uh, historical evidence, archaeological evidence, all those things throughout this series. But what if we just accepted it and obeyed it? Because that's really where your trust in Jesus comes from. How do I obey the Bible and trust it even when it doesn't necessarily make sense to me at the time? Because God desires more obedience from us than us to know what it says. That being said... I still think the Bible's true. I still think the Bible's infallible and inerrant. And I still think the Bible can prove itself to be legitimate. Thanks. This has been your 5 at 9.